In this video, I'll show you how I edit and shoot an overhead portrait on location. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today I'm out of my small home studio because we're going to shoot an overhead portrait on location. The location is a field just outside the Gatwick Aviation Museum and I'm here because they've got a lovely area of big green grass and that's going to make a great background for our shoot. So to help me out today I've got the amazing Jade Lyon. She's going to be the model for this and as you can see we've got a wonderful sunny day and you might think well let's just go and put Jade in the sun, lie down, take some shots. But the key to this is being in control of the light and if Jade's in the sun well it's very harsh, very uncontrolled light and poor old Jade will end up squinting as she looks up into the sky. So we're going to shoot here in the shade and the first thing we need to do is find a nice green patch of grass. Hmm. So we found a patch of green grass, we put some green tarpaulin and Jade's going to lie down on that and we're in the shade here so let's start by just taking a picture in the natural light. So Jade, do you want to lie down for me? Yeah. I'm going to shoot this from above so I'm going to use some steps to keep nice and safe. So I've got my Black Rapid strap on so I don't drop anything on top of Jade. Let's see how this looks. So that picture actually looks quite good. The soft lighting from being in the shade works really well, but we can probably do a little bit better if we add our own lighting into the scene. So to light Jade, I'm going to use my Flashpoint Explore 600, and the position and direction of this light is going to be critical and different to how I would normally light. So normally Jade would be stood up against a background, and I'd have my light up here somewhere. But I've got to think about the whole scene as being flipped 90 degrees. So rather than lighting from up here, I'm actually going to angle my light down from down here. So when I'm looking down from above, this would be a similar lighting pattern to what I would do when I was back in my studio. So the next thing to do is to take control of the light. So I'm actually going to underexpose the scene and then fill in the shadows with flash. So before I fire the flash, I'm going to switch into manual mode. I'm going to dial in an aperture of f11 and my shutter speed, my flash sync speed, 250th of a second and see how that looks. And as you can see, that picture looks really dark, which is exactly what I want, because now I can add some more light with the flash. So with those numbers locked in the camera, all I need to do is make this flash produce exactly the same amount of light. So let's see what we're getting at the moment. I'm getting F8, so I need another stop of light out of the flash, which I can do using the remote control. And then we'll just try that again. F11. So that's exactly what I need. So in theory, if I take a shot now, it should be correctly exposed on Jade. So that looks really good. We've got some lovely lighting on Jade's face. We've got a lit side and a slightly shady side. If the shady side was too much for you, you could either add a second light or even just a reflector. But what's really important before we get going is to have a good look around the scene and see if there's anything that needs to be taken out now rather than trying to do it later in Photoshop. So let's do a quick bit of gardening. And once that's done, we can set the scene up and start taking some shots. model can be quite hard work but modeling lying down well that's a whole new level of difficulty and Jade did a fantastic job but there's a few things she can't overcome and one of them is that gravity when you're lying down doesn't work the same as gravity when you're standing up so I'm going to give her a very slight helping hand so here I am inside of Photoshop with the image I want to edit I'm going to go to filter and down to liquify now inside the liquify dialog box I'll make sure I'm on the forward warp tool and then with a nice sized brush, I'm just going to gently nudge in her neckline like that. I'm also going to take up ever so slightly her chin, 
just a little bit because that's really where gravity in this shot is showing its effect in the wrong way. So that's done, that's nice and simple. The next things are things that I want to do to the picture and there's two things. I'd like a shallower depth of field and a sort of bleached sun look. Let's do the first one, shallower depth of field. Odd thing to think about when I'm shooting directly above, but in post-processing, I thought this would really make a difference. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm gonna go back to filter. I'll go down to blur gallery and choose tilt shift. Now tilt shift is a great filter. At the top, it's blurry, in the middle, it's clear, and at the bottom, it's blurry again. Now I can rotate this around by bringing my cursor to around the area of these small circles and click and drag and give that a bit of a twist. I can also move the position so I can drag this line in. This solid line is zero blur, this dotted line is 100%. So I'm gonna spread those out slightly just to give me a slightly more of a graduated effect. And I control the strength of the blur either on the right hand side or I can do it right here on the on-screen display. What that does is it slightly blurs out the book, which I think is useful for keeping the distraction of written words out of the shot, but also it creates a nice effect as almost a three-dimensional look to the shot. Click OK and that will apply the effect. Now what about that sun bleached looks? Well there are loads of ways you could do this. Here's one, the one I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to layer, new adjustment layer and choose levels. On the levels, well let's just click OK first, I'll find this little black white slider and I'm going to come to the black end and just move it in until the output level says around about 30. Now that will make sure there's no pure blacks in this picture whatsoever. In fact, it starts at a quite a dark gray. Next, I'm gonna to come to the histogram slider and slightly move in the white point around about 10 points, something like that. So I have slightly blown out highlights and no pure blacks. We can close that down. What about that warm tone effect? Well, for that, I'm gonna go back to layer, new adjustment layer, and this time color balance. Click OK. And all I'm gonna to do to make it nice and warm is pop some yellow in and add plenty of red. And with a little bit of cloning and a few fine tuning changes, there it is. There's my final picture completed. Well, that was a great fun shoot and we got some fantastic pictures. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below. And if you wanna see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you gotta do? You gotta click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.